Now, if you've been paying attention to my other streams, you'll know I'm a sucker for a good survival crafting community management game. That's why when I opened my Steam store and saw a new title from the people behind Surviving Mars, a game which I've been eyeing the way a cockroach might eye a piece of meat left on the counter, I had to get it. Well, so coming to you from producers Frontier Foundry and extremely experienced developers Hemimont, a studio based in Sofia, Bulgaria, known for such titles as Tropico 3, Tropico 4, Tropico 5, the Grand Ages Rome series, and more recently Surviving Mars, Stranded Alien Dawn is something a little bit different and a little bit familiar all at the same time. It's a heady mix of Lost in Space, Firefly, Starship Troopers, and that one episode of Love, Death, and Robots that had the giant cowboy punk mecha scrapping with a never-ending horde of bug monsters. You know, minus the mecha for now, of course. And from this strange, strange brood clutch has hatched an unholy survival crafting community management larva in the vein of RimWorld, Dwarf Fortress, The Sims, Going Medieval, State of Decay, Icarus, Plants vs. Zombies, and there's even a little bit of Project Zomboid in there. It is survival, exploration, crafting, community management, tower defense, a goddamn mother bug stomp, a cowboy punk sci-fi building game where the tobacco is dry and the steel strings twang. In the spirit of reducing a gameplay loop to a slogan like 4X, you know, explore, expand, exploit, exterminate, maybe this game's gameplay loop could be best explained as meat bugs, eat bugs, yeet bugs. And to cap it all off, it just released on October 12th, 2022, which also happens to be my birthday. And what did I do to mark my special day? Why, I went to Offworld, a fancy new science fiction themed bar in Toronto for some quality cocktails. And yes, at least one bug was eaten. So when I saw this lovely little imago molting on my Steam store page, I just had to have it. Now, this game has received very positive reviews already across all platforms. And since it's only a goddamn early access title that came out a few days ago, I'd say that's pretty impressive. Above all, it is a good damn time. Some key observations to give you an idea of where the early access is at. This isn't as random a story generator as you might be used to with a title like RimWorld. The characters you crash land with are selected from a long list of predefined personas. Maybe we'll get the option to add more later, I certainly hope so, but for now your community takes on the tone of the people you select. So do you want the Chadley ship captain to lead you on the new worlds? How about the package deal husband and wife duo who cover both crafting and medicine? What about a steely-eyed and only slightly deranged housewife seeking a purpose following her divorce from a dastardly lawyer? I feel like I know this chick. Well me, I picked all four and had a great time. Moments after we crash landed on the Dodge City seed map, Talus, the captain, was on his knees weeping like he knew he'd f***ed up, while the others consoled him and comforted him. Given how much time I've put into Going Medieval, which has all the survival building systems, but none of the interpersonal relationships, it's really very nice to see this all play out with totally not stylized, gorgeous graphics. The game is also really stable. 15 hours in, not one crash, bug, or... Oh, okay, there's lots of bugs in the code, but you know what I mean. So what are the downsides that I've noticed? Well, over several hours of gameplay, I've only encountered two types of enemies in the base attacks. They're tough in an annoying kind of way, but fairly easy to cheese early on. And if there are bigger or more complex enemies, other than charismatic megafauna run amok, I've yet to introduce it to the business end of a laser pistol. The tech tree, while offering a full progression, feels a little empty, like there's much more to come. I expect, of course, there will, in fact, be much more to come. If this game shipped to early access as fully featured as RimWorld is, beating out virtually every survival crafting game in the market before even factoring in the exploration and combat elements, I expect some truly incredible things from the developer roadmap. And my major, major hope and wishes are that the developers will substantially increase the size of the playfields or open up interplay field travel with vehicles other than the hot air balloons, like, say, tamed and saddled flathead for full planetary exploration, or even ships for extraplanetary flight. I haven't seen a roadmap, but it does look from the way the game is designed that husbandry of the aforementioned charismatic megafauna seems like a foregone conclusion. It's not cowboy punk unless you have cows. Well, or, you know, bugs that secrete nourishing liquid when you squeeze them, right? And of course, I hope that they'll include antagonists like bandits or raiders, 
I know we're playing house on an inhospitable and underdeveloped bug planet, but even building competitor or raider factions out of other possible crew members you didn't pick or who didn't join you would go a long way to driving the narrative elements of the game. Also, and from a practical perspective, raiders bring their loot to you. If every third attack wave was a humanoid, sentient band of attackers who dropped corpses, wardrobe items, and weapons like they do in RimWorld or going medieval, the bug waves could be made more mechanically complicated or dangerous, and the fighting would be even spicier in the early game. And, you know, last, weapons. Look, Hamemont, I know it's a western with laser guns, but the gunpowder age is missing entirely from the tech tree, and for a game which uses a sprite of a six-shooter to represent how many weapons your crew has stockpiled, that seems like a glaring omission. Give him a peacemaker. On the technical side, I don't know what engine the game is made in. You know, it doesn't feel like a Unity game or an Unreal title, to be honest. I don't recognize any of the stock assets, but it does have the dreaded de nouveau DRM. As someone who cares about performance and privacy, that stands out to me as a deliberate choice by the developer or publisher. Now, it's certainly not a deal breaker, but DRM on an early access title is weird, and using anti-cheat software in a single-player game blows my mind. Unless... multiplayer, maybe? Multiplayer RimWorld is the shit. Now, if you're listening, Hammy Mom. But look, I still have been having an absolute blast. When was the last time you had fun playing a game's tutorial? I did. I got annoyed every single time the tutorial missions ended because I was enjoying where they were going. And once I got into the game and got a community past the barely surviving line to the point where we were eating bugs for breakfast, lunch, and dinner while waiting for our crops to pop, I just, well, fell in love with this game and provided content, updates, and tweaks are forthcoming. It's definitely gonna burrow deep in my brain and live there for a long time, like some weird alien parasite I just can't get rid of. As it stands, I don't want to. Hey look, mind control. Anyway, here's a game I'm gonna get some mileage from. I'm 11 episodes deep in a going medieval playthrough. I've been planning out a RimWorld junket for some time, but falling into early access like an ill-fated piece of space junk smashing into the surface of an alien planet, stranded alien dawn is just so damn cool. And I'm a little new at this reviewing business. I don't have a rubric or criteria for what I like and don't like yet, but if you made me rate it, laser pistol to my temple, I'd give Stranded Alien Dawn a solid 8.5 out of 10, which for an early access game, for which I haven't yet seen a developer roadmap, is about as good as it gets. So I'm looking forward to doing Let's Plays and guides for this one far into the future. As always, see you in space.